Amen. We certainly want to welcome everyone to, again to our online Bible study um, here at Ebenezer Baptist Church, our virtual online Bible study. Uh, we're certainly uh, grateful uh, that you have decided to join us this evening, um, and we certainly pray that uh, you've been being blessed uh, by this teaching on the power of God's name. Um, we certainly want to thank Pastor Ham again for the opportunity and for his uh, graciousness and just uh, sharing this platform and allowing me this opportunity to even come in, you know, to share. Um, as I've always said, don't uh, take it lightly. And we are certainly uh, very grateful for this opportunity. Amen. Amen. I certainly hope everyone had a wonderful holiday weekend. Um, maybe you didn't. Uh, hopefully, you didn't eat too much. Amen. No barbecue. No barbecue. Amen. Amen. Yeah, things are starting to get back to a little bit of normalcy. Uh, I know some people still like. Ah, nope. I'm good. Like, give it a little bit more time. Uh, send me my hamburger or hot dog. <laughs> Do a drive by. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity uh, that you've given us to come in to learn of your word. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And, Lord, thank you for those who have uh, tuned in yes. and are a part of this study. Mm -hmm. I pray, gracious Father, that you would just illuminate our mind and our, our, our hearts, God, as we study. I pray, God, that you would just uh, give us uh, what to, to say and what to expound upon, how to uh, bring revelation, God. We know that you are the teacher. And so I pray, God, that you will teach yeah. through me tonight. Um, that you would be uh, glorified in this. So mm -hmm. I turn this Bible study over to you and I give it, yes, put it yes. in your hands. I place it in your hands and ask you to, uh, to do what you will um, that mm -hmm. those who have joined will get out of it. God, you know, the several needs God, that are on the line and God, we pray that it's something will be said that will encourage strengthen uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we thank you in advance for what you're going to do was in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Uh, so once again, we want to say uh, good evening and again, welcome. Um, and so, uh, so of course, we, we've been studying the power of God's names. And, you know, each week we ask you to give uh, some of the, you know, the names that we've gone over. Um, and we, we trust that through uh, just the, being expounded upon that you would um, learn uh, and we would learn how to apply the power of God's name to our situations. Uh, we said before that there's not a situation that exists that God doesn't have a name for it, uh, mm -hmm. that he doesn't have the power uh, to address any of our situations. And we understand that victory uh, comes based on what we know about the word of God and how to use the word of God. Amen. Uh, this is why Bible study is important because we are we put ourselves in position to equip ourselves so that when we go through several things, when we go through life, when we go through uh, circumstances and challenges, we know that we have an we have access to an arsenal to help us get through those things. And more importantly, that will assure us victory. Mm -hmm. Amen. And everything that we are dealing with. Amen. Everybody say victory. 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 Victory, victory, victory. Even on the even on the conference call, let's say it again. Say victory, victory. victory. Amen. Victory. Um, because would you agree if you if you feel scared to say victory, it'll be pretty hard to walk in it. Ah, Woo. Yeah. 
Amen. So if you Amen. if you're not bold to say victory, it's victory. gonna be quite difficult to walk in it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And this is why we've been going over you know the power of God's name because the power of God's name give us victory. Amen. And it gives Amen. us victory in every area of our life. So there's not one area of our life that we need to be defeated in. Amen. As Amen. a child of God, we there's not one area in our life that we should be defeated in. Doesn't mean we won't be challenged in it, but mm. we shouldn't be defeated in it. Amen. There's Amen. a difference. We are going to be Amen. challenged. We're going to go through. We're all going to have hard times. We're going to uh, have some situations. Mm. However, if I know and when I know that I'm not defeated, then I know I have victory. And guess what? I know how to hold on. Amen. I Amen. Pastor Amen. say this all the time and I love saying it. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Amen. And if I can just, if nothing else, if we can just instill that in our minds mm -hmm. that when this battle that I'm in, I'm not fighting for the victory because the victory has already been won in Christ. Amen. And since he is my Amen. battle, remember we, we talked about uh, he was my, he is my chief. Uh, he's my captain. Now, what name of God, what name of Jehovah God said that he was our captain? He was our warrior. What name did we go over that said he was our warrior? Jehovah Saba. Jehovah Saba. Okay. I heard First Lady whispering on the, on the conference call. On, on. <laughs> and I heard that, tell, amen. Jehovah Shaba. I mean, that's right. Say it. Jehovah Shaba. He's my, he's my captain. He's my commander. Amen. 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 So, which means that I got a, I got a fighter. I have a winner fighting for me. Amen. 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 Um, so what I want to do tonight, I want to kind of, uh, I want to pick up on something Pastor Ham uh, shared on, on last week. Um, and it, it certainly um, just rang uh, something with me and I just want to just share it again. I'm sure he uh, does mind um, going, just, just reading the scripture because I want to, um, point out what he pointed out and just really um, not adding to it, but just to bring back out. So as we understand this name that we've gone over, Jehovah Maccadish, Maccadish, um to understand um, what it means and how as a believer, how I need to walk in my life. So I want to, let's turn to Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. And we want to look at the, the first verse, Isaiah 6. Anybody there? No. All right, uh, so when you have it, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongues off of the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath, lo, this hath touched my lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send 
and who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. Amen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know uh, our preachers um, will can attest to this, you know, and then a lot of times when they bring you before the board or your pastor or whoever they ask you, you know, how do you know that you're called? Um, you know, sometimes it relates to like a scripture with scripture and this scripture, um, uh, verse number eight was the scripture that resonated um, in, with me when um i heard this um and i remember the first time i I saw i read this scripture and it jumped out at me i said nope that can't be me (laughs) i was like no 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 i said you putting words in my mouth god i didn't say that (laughs) because it was like who will go for me and you have to keep you have to keep reading right (laughs) and it says whom shall i send who will go for us I'm like, hmm, I don't know. And then the next one says, then said I, here I am, send me. I was like, Lord, you got me. Because, you know, because it resonated. It was just something about this scripture when it says, who will go for us? Who will send me? Uh, And it said, Lord, here am I. So when we look at it, when we look at verse one in the year that King Uzai died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne and and pastor uh, shared with us on last week that it wasn't until as King Ezra died that he saw the Lord. And, and so the question tonight is what is King Ezra in your life tonight? What is preventing you from seeing the Lord? What's preventing you from seeing him as he is. Amen. Amen. Because when we look at here, it says, uh, in the year that King as I die, I saw the Lord and look. And how did he see the Lord? He saw the Lord. What high? And he was what? Lifted, Lifted up. up. Amen. See, when we remove those things that are blocking us from seeing God, we will see him as he is. Mm-hmm. And he is high and lifted up. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, and so, and then when we see him, we see him as he is. And look, he was sitting high upon the throne and lifted up and his train. Look, it filled the temple and above it, the, the seraphims, you know, now, you know, we, you know, we're looking at these angels. Look how they are in the presence of God, that the presence of God is so magnificent, that the presence of God is so holy. Now, these are ministering angels uh, that uh, that are in the presence of God. I mean, they're in, I mean, in the raw presence, if you think about it, the raw presence of God. And it is so awesome. Uh, and he is so magnificent that they can't even look upon him. They they he, they have wings that they and they their wings, they just cover their entire body, mm. they cover their feet, they cover their face. Why? Because it, it points to the fact of his holiness. That's how awesome he is. And then look what they do. They cry, holy, holy, holy. You know, as Pastor Ham said, three times, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Look at this. The whole earth is full of his glory. We, do we understand that the whole earth is filled with his glory? Amen. Sometimes we are unable to see it or witness it because we have Uzrais in our life. And those Uzrais are preventing us Uzra. from seeing him as he is. And another thing that uh, we talked about that as we get closer to God, yes. uh, not only do we, uh, you know, we increase in terms of, you know, um, our effectiveness and and our prayer life and becoming closer. But the one thing that happens as I get closer to God is that I see myself as I am. That's right. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, I don't just, you know, I get closer to God and I, you know, on all of the wonderful things that come with being in God's presence, but being in God's presence also reveals who I am. Yes. And in the revelation of who I am, 
then it's, it's, it's then that I can make decisions in correcting and asking God for help to correct him. Because Isaiah says, woe is me. Yes. And looking at all of this splendor that he is witnessing, the next thing he says, woe is me. Yes. Why? Because after I see this, after I have access and I see the splendor of God, it can do nothing but show me me. And I can really show it. It humbles me. Yes. That's why we can't go. That's why we don't go into the presence of God being all boisterous and everything, because um, it, because of his holiness and his presence. He's the one who's allowed us to come into his presence. Mm -hmm. And then I see myself and he says, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. And look at this. I dwell in the midst of the people with unclean lips. And he says, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And then the sheriff films, you know, came to him with a live coal in his hand, which they've taken from the tongues off the altar. And what did they do? They let it put in his mouth and say, lo, this have touched thy lips. Thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged. And look at this. It wasn't until his, uh, his iniquity, you know, um, was taken away and his sins purged that the next question was, who will go for us? Who will go for us? So God is saying, once, once, once I, you know, you're, you get the thing that's blocking you, blocking you from me out of your life, you get to see me. When you come into my presence, you, 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 I'm going to show you who you really are. And it's not to, def, you know, to, to put you, put us down. It's just, a, it's just a show. Do you remember we talked about a mirror? A mirror just shows you exactly what it is. Amen. Amen. All right. And so, and then now we can, now God can send us. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Amen. He can now send us mm -hmm. once we've been what purged. Once we have been, um, you know, our sins have been taken away, and we know that that happens because of the work of Calvary. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. And so Amen. when we look at this name, we said this name of Jehovah Magadish. It is the Lord, our sanctifier. Amen. Yes. He is the one who sanctifies. He is the one who sets us apart. Amen. 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 And so that becomes, you know, oh, important in what we want to look at here. All right. Sanctification. Mm. All righty. All right. Give me one moment. Let me just go and share my screen here. I uh, doesn't want to have any questions at this time. Okay. Well, we cannot sanctify ourselves. He has to sanctify us. Yeah. Give me a mic. All right. Amen. Can everyone see that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, Pastor, are you able to see that? I know last yes. week we had some challenges. Yes. Again? Pra praise God. All right. So, Jehovah Maccadish. Okay. Um, and this is the word Makado Ishkam. There's also Jehovah Makadish. All right. So um, I am the Lord your God. Okay. And when we looked at the scripture, let's go back. Let's turn to Leviticus 20, 7, and 8. So Leviticus 20. Seven and eight. Right. And if you have it, it says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I, the Lord your God. For I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord that sanctify you. Amen. Amen. So I sanctify yourselves and be holy. Why? Because I am the Lord. And so as we said on last week, the word uh, Jehovah Maccadish, it means the Lord who sanctifies. The eternal self-sufficient one 
who sanctifies. And as Pastor says, the Lord makes it clear that he alone has the ability to cleanse, sanctify, and make us holy. Mm -hmm. Amen? So he makes it clear. I am the, he is the only one that can cleanse us, that can sanctify us, and make us holy. Mm. Okay? And that uh, Jesus' work on the cross is what brings about our justification. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. All right. We went, went through that last week. All right. All right. So now uh, I am the Lord, your God. The Lord is the God of believers. Therefore, the believer is to set his life apart to God to live a holy and pure life. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, God is, is the one who has sanctified us. And that means to be set apart. And because I am set apart, God is setting me apart so that I could live a holy and a pure life. And we discussed that the only way that we can live this life is through the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Amen. And so uh, when we look at this, the believer is to cleanse himself from all the defilement of sin and to be totally consecrated to God. And so he is the one who sanctifies us. And now we are to cleanse ourselves from everything, everything that would defile him. Every defilement of sin. Why? Because we are to be what? Consecrated to God. Amen. And it's through our consecration is how God is able to use us. Amen. If you really want to be used by God, then you want to take a look at my level of consecration, Amen. my level of being set aside. What is it? How am I? What, what, what am I viewing? How do I view things as they're proposed to the world and God? How important is God to the things that I want from life? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what the enemy tries to make us feel in the world try to make us feel is that um, if I give myself to God, then I miss out on life. I'm not. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real tonight. Sometimes that's what's taking. That's why people don't show up at church like they should. We're not as committed as we should um, because we have this idea that if I'm really committed to God, I'm going to miss out on life. Uh -huh. And think about it. Think about how that sounds. The God that has given us life is going to cause us to miss out on it. <laughs> Amen. He is the God that has given us life. Right? But I think when I, it, you know, because we think of this, you know, this picture of being holy and sanctified as someone that's like a monk. Like we we hidden away in some house somewhere with bread and water, you know, with a Bible on our hands, on our knees for 24 to 48 hours. You know what I mean? That's the picture that we have. Oh, if I'm consecrated to God, then I, I'm missing out. And the truth of the matter is we really don't live. We really can't really enjoy life until we are connected and sanctified to, to God because he is the giver of life. Amen. Amen. So mm -hmm. I really don't even get to experience life as I should until I am connected to him. And the mm -hmm. closer I am to him, the more I'm able to enjoy the life that he wants me to live. See, the question, mm -hmm. the problem is sometimes is what is our view of what living really is? <laughs> there you go. See, because yeah. if you think living is drinking, there you being go. at the bars and different things like that, if that's your view of living, then yes, that mm -hmm. is, the, mm -hmm. that's, yes, you will have to give that up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, I know it's gonna get. I know it's gonna get quiet. Those are tired, tired around here. <laughs> you know, and you know, sometimes, unfortunately, what we do, what we've gotten, what some people have gotten good at is, well, you know, I'm only human. Oh, you ever know that's how people throw that up there when they. The truth of the matter is, is not not to just identify our weakness, 
Mm-hmm. But to identify that I'm not, I'm not going to try to do better because I'm human. I'm human. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And we say things like God understands. No. And we say it in a standpoint that God should let me slide to do what I want to do because he understands that I'm human. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it, 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 it might get a little, 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 little tight through here, um, but no, he doesn't. You know why? Because that's why he sent his son. Yes. <laughs> Amen? Amen. He sent his son to die on the cross mm-hmm. so that I can ask for forgiveness so he can cleanse me from sin, mm-hmm. then empower me so that I can live a life free from sin. There you go. Amen. 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 Doesn't mean I'm not going to make mistakes. But mm-hmm. I shouldn't be trying to I shouldn't be trying to do it purposely. Right. Amen? Amen. 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 See, the believer is not to allow the world's viewpoint and ways trespass on their minds, bodies, or spirits. So um when we understand the world, we understand that the world um uh, uh, has a prince who's in charge. Mm-hmm. And so therefore he is the one who influences their viewpoint and their ways. That's why the Bible mm. says that the, you know, the world is, is an enmity. It's an enemy to God mm. because of who is in charge and who is influencing their viewpoint. Yeah. And because he, the enemy is the one who's influencing their viewpoint, it's always going to be against God. That's right. Yeah. So therefore, since that is the case, God does not want me to take on their viewpoint. And what it, what it means by taking their viewpoint, it means to take on the way that they think, the way that they believe, the way that they walk, the way that they do things. Mm-hmm. Because if I do that, I then become, I, I act as an enemy towards God. Mm-hmm. Everybody with me? Gotcha. Now, just, now, just, just want to kind of help us out a little bit because a lot of times what the world, how the world tries to spin this against Christians is to try to make us feel that we're better than, Amen. Oh, you think you better than no, it's not that I think I am not better than I'm, it's only by the grace of God. But it, you, you know, uh, the, or they'll try to do things that's like, well, you know, you're not the only one that's right. Because mm. what are they trying to do? They want to introduce their viewpoint. They want to have other gods. Your God is not the only God. Mm-hmm. You oh, should no. respect everybody else's God. You, you see, you see how the twist becomes and it tries to put you in contention with people because it makes you feel like you're insensitive. Mm. When all you're doing is you're standing for the standards of God. As I said last week, whatever God says is wrong, it's wrong no matter who comes together, no matter what committee comes together, it doesn't matter who decides to come together and agree with it. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. Wow. That's right. Period. That's right. Man. If God says it's right, it's right. Period. Mm-hmm. So as a believer living a holy and pure life, I'm not to uh, allow their viewpoint to uh, penetrate me, if you will, cause me to come in. See, because what happens, um, the reason why God says I'm the one who sanctifies you, I'm the one who sets you apart, because um, he He knows if I don't set myself apart, <clears throat> I will allow myself to be influenced by them. Mm. And when you are influenced by something, you begin to do what you're influenced by. That's right. Amen. 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 It's just like this. If you are if you are a recovering alcoholic, Mm -hmm. you really it's difficult for you. You know, you shouldn't be going to the bar (laughs) saying I'm going in there so I can witness because I can relate. Uh, now maybe God might send you, but he's not, he's only going to see you when he knows you are prepared, you're able to handle it. Mm-hmm, because sure. when you go around something that has been influenced or that can have influence over you, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. what ends up happening. If it influences you, then it will start to draw you from him and you'll begin uh, to adopt what they think and what they do. Amen. amen. That's why, that's why and when we look at this story, um, that's why God was preparing his people um, before they got to the land of the promised land, because he knew what they were going to come up against. Mm-hmm. And he told me, I don't want you to be like them. That's right. I don't want you to mingle with them. I don't want you to do. See, and it wasn't that God was against you know, everybody. All that God was needing. No, he understood that if you mingle with them, you're not going to be the one who's going to bring them over. They're going to bring you over. All right. Amen. 
And that's where we have to be careful. We keep thinking, you know, you know, you know, trying to do the things like the world do and try to be their mm-hmm. friend and try mm-hmm. to do things so that we can get more people and and mm-hmm. uh, all of these things. And trust me, I am very, you know, I am against being progressive. I'm against, um, you know, doing things, um, you know, in ministry, uh, in terms of, of growing ministry, but it should never be at the point of compromise. Right. Amen. 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 God doesn't need compromise to draw anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw <laughs> all men unto me. Amen. 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 And so he is the Lord, our sanctifier, the one who sets us apart. So which means I have to be <laughs> conscious of the life that I live. That's right. Amen. Amen. And what, Amen. what it means to be conscious of the life that you live is that you be able to identify those things that you know will cause you to move away from God. Mm-hmm. Hey Amen. You, you, you and I know, and it's not going to be the same. You know why? All of us have different likes. Yes. So the thing that pulls you won't be the one that pulls me. That's right. Amen. 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 All right. So when we look at sanctification, it refers broadly to the concept of being set apart as sacred. Yes. Okay. So for an example, when we look at Genesis 2, 3, God sanctified the seventh day, mm-hmm. which means he set it apart as sacred. That's right. Okay. So when we look at sanctification, it is the process of God setting us apart from sin and unrighteousness and to his person and purpose. Yes. So when we talk about sanctification, God saying he is, he is the process. Everybody say process. Process. So it's the process of God so- setting us apart from sin. Meaning he's setting us aside, pulling us apart from sin mm. and unrighteousness, and is drawing us to his person and purpose. Yeah. So he's pulling us from sin and drawing us mm. to him. Amen. Why? Because he wants to make us unique and set apart and holy. Mm. Mm. Amen. So sanctification mm. is progressive. When we talk about sanctification, sanctification is progressive. Mm. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in our life on a daily basis with the goal of making us to look more like Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why as we grow in our faith Mm -hmm. every day, we should be looking, acting, talking like Christ. Amen. 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 As as believers, if Amen. I'm walking with God, if I'm walking with God, if mm-hmm. I'm allowing myself to be set apart, if mm-hmm. I'm if I'm if, if being in his presence is important to me. Mm-hmm. So this is where it comes down to what's important. Yeah. What's important to me? Right. Is, is spending time with God important to me? Yes. Yeah. Now, if I ask the question, everybody on the line will say, yes, it's important to me. Yeah. Then my follow up question is how consistent are we? with it <clears throat> our consistency points to what's important amen 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 when you wake up in the morning before you leave the house do you not brush your teeth amen please everybody say yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why because you deem imp- important <laughs> am i right because if you know if you don't do it and you know you're going to be talking to people, you may offend some folks. Amen. Well, Amen. not may. You are going to offend some folks. Yeah, some folks turn their heads. People turning their heads. You wonder why they're walking away from you. You know, and they putting up their hand like, or, or you know, someone just offer you a mint. Like, no. And you be like, nah, they be like, no, 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 no. You need to take this. <laughs> why? Because we understand it's important in my everyday walk. Amen. And if I'm going to talk Amen. with someone, I don't want to offend them that I'm going to. I'm, I know it's a silly example, but again, so it's important to me. So now as I make God important to me, mm-hmm. then so is spending time with him becomes important to me. Amen. So that means that I'm spending time with him outside of when I'm with my believers coming to church. Amen. Sunday morning should not be the only time that I have communed with God. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 It, it, it should not be. If I am 
since I am sanctified, set apart. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Oh, man. Y'all work with me. Y'all, y'all, like I say, they're going to make me work tonight. <laughs> Amen. But 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 again, this is what God is saying. He said, I want you set a, set aside, set apart. I've set yeah. you apart to be holy, unique, you need look at your neighbor and say, I'm unique. I'm unique. I'm unique. I'm unique. Amen. Something that's Amen. unique, guess what it is? It's Amen. valuable. Yes. If you find a diamond that no, that's that nobody else has in the world, how valuable is that? All right. The value of its uniqueness. Is what drives this value. Mm -hmm. See, if you got a whole lot of them, then is that not that much value? They'd be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, anybody can have it." I'm not. Amen. But when it's unique, when you don't have a lot of it, it becomes very valuable okay. and attractive. Because what happens? Everything that's unique and valuable is attractive because it's different, that's right. and because of this uniqueness and difference, it draws. And the reason mm -hmm. why God wants us to be unique set apart and holy because when I walk this life the way he wants me to walk it it's going to draw somebody because yeah. somebody's going to look at the way I live and the way I act and the way I talk and see that it's different mm -hmm. and they will identify mm -hmm. the struggles in their life and they'll look at me or you and say I want to be like them what is it about them that make them do what they do what is it about them that make they talk the way they talk or act the way they mm -hmm. act they don't mm -hmm. act right. like everybody else they don't do like everybody else they don't their yeah. behavior is different what is it about them and what yeah. happens is that is what allows us to witness to that person and let them know it's not me but it's the god that's in me yeah man yes yeah. he is the one that has sanctified me he is the mm -hmm. one that has set me apart he is yeah. the one that has allowed me to live this life that is attracting you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 So now when we look in the book of Le Amen. Leviticus, uh, actually, let's go back. Let's go to, um, let me see. Did I, I may have already, I may have put this scripture in. Hmm. If I did, I'll go back to it. All right. Let's turn to Genesis. Just want to show you in scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter two. So Genesis chapter two. This is what we're talking about setting aside. And we're going to look at verse one. I'm pretty sure I probably put it a little further and I may have maybe getting ahead of myself. But since we're here, let's just take a look at it. Mm. All right. Genesis chapter two. Let's, let's look at verse one. And it says, thus, the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So God sanctified it, which means that he set it apart. Mm. He made it different in its sense of observation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to go and I'm going to, I am going to uh, elaborate on that a little more, a little later. All right. So in Leviticus, Yahweh tells the entire people of Israel to maintain being sanctified. So in the book of Leviticus, mm -hmm. he's speaking to the entire nation of being mm -hmm. sanctified. And also, he says, I am the Lord that sanctifies. Yes. Okay. Now, what was the purpose? He understood that Israel was headed to a land of plenty mm -hmm. and a land of temptation. Yes. It's, a, it, 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 it's amazing that we have to understand that sometimes when we are on our way to our blessing, mm -hmm. along with our blessing is also temptation. That's right. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Blessings, temptation. Mm -hmm. So God says, I need you to be set aside mm -hmm. so that while you're in your land of blessings, while you are enjoying your blessings, you're not drawn by temptation. Amen. 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 Don't think that when the, when God has set out to bless you, that the enemy is not going to try to set traps for you. Uh, All right. 
That's when he mm-hmm. says it. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can be excited about the land of milk and honey, mm-hmm. but you have to also have to be aware of the temptations that's going to come with it. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because look at this. God and God knew that he was going to be in that in the land that he was going to be leading them was going to be where there was going to have the Canaanites, the Hittites, mm-hmm. the Amorites, mm. the Jebusites, and many more. Yes. Why is this important? Because he knew they were going to he was they were going to be surrounded by people who mm-hmm. what thought differently, talk differently, mm-hmm. live differently, and believe differently. Yes. Why is it important for you and I to be set apart, to be sanctified, to understand, to really know that God is my sanctifier. He's the one who he's the only one that can sanctify me, but he's requiring me to live this life of holiness because he knows, guess what? We're going to be, we are surrounded by people who think differently, who talk differently, who live differently and who believe differently. Yes. Yes, and are. I'm not just talking about just differences in opinions and ideals and things that, um, you know, because we are all different. I'm talking about things as it relates to God. Mm. The people who think differently about God, the people who talk differently about God, the people who live differently than the way God is requiring and the people mm. who believe differently. Would you agree? Amen. Yes. yes. God is saying, uh, so in order for you to have success, Surrounded by these types of people, mm-hmm. you have to be sanctified. You have to be set aside. You have to allow me to set you apart. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now, when we look at the New Testament, the New Testament similarly reflects the idea that followers of Christ have been sanctified or set apart as a result of Christ's holiness. So when we look at uh, sanctification, we understand that the, we are sanctified um, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So yes. the blood of Jesus Christ is justifies us and it sanctifies us. OK, so it is the result of his holiness. I'm only righteous because of what he did. Hello. I only stand right before God because of what he did. What he did. That's right. Amen. Yes. So when we look at sanctification, sanctification is the process of spiritual growth by which God progressively makes us more like Jesus Christ. Yes. So it is a progressive work. Everybody say progressive. 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 It is progressive. Progressive. I'm not going to be perfect overnight. Mm. That's right. It is progressive. That's right. The work of the Holy Spirit in my life every day. Is to do what is to chip away at those things yeah. that stops me from looking like Christ. Yeah. To wow. Chip away at those things that stop me from talking like Christ, being mm-hmm. like Christ. So he's working. It is a process. Mm-hmm. It is a daily process that he is progressively yeah. making me to look like him, like Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And so the question for tonight is, how are you looking? All right. You're work in progress. How you looking? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, how you looking? 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 How are you looking? Because as he's working on us, mm-hmm. we should be looking more like him. Amen. As he is working on us progressively, all of us that are believers, all of us that have accepted Christ as our personal savior every day, because of the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, I should be looking more like Christ. Not at all. <laughs> Amen. All right. Look at your neighbor again. Say, how you looking? How you looking? Don't, a- don't answer. No, no, don't, don't answer. No. <laughs> Just write it down. Just say, hi, 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 how you looking? <laughs> Because look at this. See, see, uh, where, where am I uh, on this? Because every day I should be able. So, you know, what, what a successful entrepreneur does is they do what they call plan, do, review. And in a plan, do, review, you look at what you've done. First of all, you have an established goal. Amen. You look at what you've done towards that goal. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you look at if I fell short, how did I fall short? Right. What can I do to improve the next time I do it? Amen. Now, as believers, we're not in a sense acting as business owners, but we should take ownership of our life and be able to look at our life and say, OK, last week to mm. this week, can I see a difference in my life? Mm. Oh. Amen. Amen. Think yeah. about it. Thank you. Try it. Look, look you should be Thank able you. to evaluate your life. Mm -hmm. And look at it. Mm -hmm. See, don't wait till next year to evaluate because you don't mm -hmm. have to look at a whole year go by and mm -hmm. you'll be mad if you can't see no difference. <laughs> uh, but the question is, on a day to day basis, can I look back and say, you know what? The things that used to get me real mad and agitated last week, mm -hmm. I may be a little agitated, but I'm not as agitated. Amen. That's pro that's called progression. Look at your neighbor say that's called progression. That's called progression. The progression is, is that maybe I was stealing five oranges a week. <laughs> Just because I like the citrus taste of orange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I get to next week, I may be still stealing oranges, but I'm now down to four. <laughs> that's called progression. progression. See, the, as people look at your life, They'll mm -hmm. still cry to crucify you because you're still stealing oranges. But what they don't see is that there's progression, but you didn't take five. You only took four this week. Right, so right. prayerfully, next week, you should be down to three. Right. Come on. Now, I know it's a crazy example, but that's a progression. See, sometimes we, we want to be perfect overnight and we, we let the enemy beat us down when we're not where we're supposed to be or we didn't act the way we're supposed to act. No, it's progressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so maybe I lost the day. Maybe I maybe I said something I wasn't supposed to. Maybe I acted in a way that wasn't Christ-like today. But mm -hmm. tomorrow, a different story. Because yeah. the Lord is the Lord is working on me. Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. All right. We should be able to look at our mm -hmm. lives and, and determine: Am I looking like Christ? Am I acting? So they used to have this thing: What would Jesus do? Yeah. Before we would react to something, they would say, "Well, how? Would, what would Jesus do?" Yes. Come on. When that's in sanctification, I should be able to look at my life and say, mm -hmm. did I handle that the way Jesus would have handled it? Mm -hmm. First of all, ask the question, how would Jesus handle this? Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't really want to ask the question because we kind of know the answer and we just don't want to do it. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. The Lord told me to love. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel good with the holding this grudge. Mm. Uh -huh. Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just don't like it. Amen. See, imagine this. Just take, just take this journey with me for a moment. Imagine if everyone. Let, I was just let's just take Ebenezer. What if everybody in Ebenezer made a conscious effort to be conscious of the work of the Holy Spirit in their life on a daily basis to make them more like Christ? <laughs> What a church, what a church. Progressively, the church would be so much more powerful. Amen. Because we would be we would be consciously allowing the Holy Spirit to remove those things that are not like him. Amen. So when I find something that is a behavior that is not Christ-like, then mm. I can take it to the Lord and say, Lord, this is my issue. Can you help me with this issue that I'm having? Amen. And because God is faithful, he's mm. going to give you the grace to deal with that issue so it no longer bothers you. Mm -hmm. So that when you come together with your brothers and sisters, those things that used to get you mad and upset, it don't upset you anymore. Amen. Amen. You can start being more loving because you're not being vindictive. Amen. 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 Yes. We, can't keep, we can't keep saying that we can't keep naming the name of Christ mm. and nothing we do looks like him. Hey. Oh. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pastor, mm. I hope they're not mad that you gave me another week. Uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> Take a couple. Very good. Very good. You're doing good. Because we're talking about oh, being good. sanctified, yeah. being holy. Mm -hmm. And recognize Amen. that this is not a work that I do in myself. This is the work of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is me yielding yeah. to the Holy Spirit. Mm. So, so mm -hmm. this is what it means. So when these things continue to happen, 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is a clear mm-hmm. indication that we are not submitting to the authority of God in our life. Help me, help me. You can mm-hmm. say what you want. You can you can try to you know come up with every excuse that we can come up with. But the mm-hmm. bottom line comes to that we are not submitting the way we should. Because sanctification is progressive every single day that the Holy Spirit working on us, mm-hmm. making us more like him. Help me. Help me. Somebody say he is our sanctifier. Let's turn to Philippians. Let's turn to Philippians 1 6. Say again. Uh, Philippians. Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 6. Okay, got you. One six Philippians gotcha. one six. Gotcha. Excuse me. Yep. You have it say amen. 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 So amen. it says, being confident of this very thing, mm. that he who hath begun a good work in you yeah. will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This means once the Holy Spirit starts, comes into your life, mm-hmm. he says, be confident. It means to be confident. It means to it means know with a surety. Yeah. Look at this. Of this very thing. Mm-hmm. What is it? That he that has begun a look, look, he has begun a good work in you. Mm-hmm. Come on. Somebody say good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. He has begun a good work in you. And guess what he's going to keep doing? He gonna keep performing that good work in you until until man woo Amen. he gonna keep doing it until because he ain't gonna be finished not all he gonna keep working on you whether you want to or not help me he gonna man. keep challenging you whether you want to be challenged or not yes, he's gonna keep yes. pointing out the things that you're doing wrong whether you want to or not yes <laughs> help me help me yes yeah so you can't keep saying I'm in the presence of God not if he ain't pointing mm. something out. <laughs> Yes. They always say, you know, you, you know, you know, it, it, it's, you should not be coming to church every week, and you don't never get your toes stomped on. Mm. Mm. You mean I ain't done nothing wrong all this time? <laughs> we, just, well, we just want the messages that make us feel good. No, 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 no. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yes, God does send messages so that He can uplift us, but He also going to send messages that's going to challenge us when we're not acting like Christ. Amen. Because right. right. He doesn't want us to yeah. continue to do those things that are not looking like Christ. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yep, 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 yep. We're we gonna get this yeah. thing together. That's why God is working on it. He, me too, working on me every time. Every and I, I, I look at things and I, I look at the way I react to some things. I was like, oh God, that wasn't like you. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, you know what? That's not what you would have said, God. That's not how you would have reacted, God. And so when I recognize it, I repent and say, God, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God strengthened me so that I don't do that again. All right. Do that, God, so that I don't say that again. Mm-hmm. Do that, God, so the next time I can show love when I really want to show something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, that's the challenge. See, because when I can identify it, then I can let the Holy Spirit work in me. Yes. And do yeah. and help me strengthen me in those areas while I'm falling short. Help me. Help me. Amen. Amen. Help me. That's why Amen. He's in our lives. He know we can't do it by ourselves. Yes. Yes. He said, I know you can't Amen. do it by yourself. That's why I am your confidant. That's why I'm in your paracletus. I am the one who walks alongside you to help you. Yeah. Right. I'm Amen. the one that has the power to do the things that you can't do. Yes. Mm. So I'm asking you to follow. That's why the Bible says, if I walk after the spirit, then I won't mm. fulfill the lust of the flesh. Those Amen. things that the flesh wants me to do, yes. I won't do them when I'm walking after the spirit. Yes, but the converse is also true. If I walk after the spirit, after the flesh, I'm not fulfilling the things of the spirit. Yes. That's why the Bible talks about the spirit and the flesh are in war with each other. Because both want control. Yes. And so the less I spend time with God, the more mm. I give to my po- the more power I give to my flesh. Mm. And therefore, when my flesh wants something, I do it. 
Yes. But mm. when I give myself mm. over to Christ mm-hmm. and spend time with him and spend time in his presence through prayer and in yes. the word, when my flesh yes. rises up, then the spirit mm. can stand up and say, not so. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because it's going to try to rise Amen. up, but you got to have something to put the flesh back in its place. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. Right. So when he yeah. when you want to do something, when you've been spending time with God, God will say, Nope, don't worry about it. I got this. Amen. 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 I'm going to season mm-hmm. your words. Mm. So when you would say something else, mm-hmm. you end up saying, God bless you. Yes. I wow. love you. Uh, you don't even look at yourself and say, Whoa, what who, who said that? <laughs> 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 I'm sure many of you can look at your life and you can look at how you're responding to some situations and you can look mm-hmm. at last mm-hmm. year or a couple years ago mm-hmm. and you and you can look at how you're acting now and you're like, man, if you would have caught me two years ago, I wouldn't be smiling like I'm smiling right now. Amen. Oh, well, y'all know it to be true. Mm-hmm. I know you say, but some of y'all yeah. used to be fighters. Y'all ain't in yeah. that. That ain't left yet. Y'all, it's still it's hitting there and it's somewhere. Somebody got to just say the right thing. <laughs> I'm all, that's right. I, I'm sorry, Pastor. They, they don't have. We don't have any of those Ebenezer. You know, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mother folks that have watched this broadcast. A little later. All right, let's turn to uh, First Thessalonians five twenty three. Thessalonians. First Thessalonians five twenty three. Mm. Five. Twenty-three. Five. Twenty-three. Everyone there? Amen. Amen. It says, "And Amen. the Holy God of peace sanctify you wholly." Somebody say, "Holy." Holy. And I holy. pray, God, your holy. whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord. Jesus Christ. So sanctify you wholly, sanctify you completely. Amen. Amen. Set aside, apart. Amen. Why is he setting us aside? He's setting us aside for his use. Everybody say his use. His, his use. use. Okay. His so now when we look at the term uh, justification, because we look at sanctification, mm. justification, mm. the two two uh, words that are used. Um, a justification is the Christian document concerning how believers are declared to be right with God through their mm-hmm. faith in Jesus Christ. So mm-hmm. when we talk about justification, justification talks about how I stand before God, how mm-hmm. I look before God. Mm-hmm. OK, so when I talked about being justified, I'm, when I when I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I accept him as my personal savior, then God declares me right or the God declares me to be justified. God right. declares me a, a right to stand before his presence. I don't stand before his presence in my own. I don't stand before my, his presence in my own glory, in my own righteousness. Matter of fact, because the Bible says that all of my righteousness is like filthy rags before yeah. him. Mm-hmm. So the only way that I'm able to be declared justified or right is through my faith in Christ. Mm-hmm. And so when we took a look at that Greek word uh, for justification, it means to uh, to justify. Uh, it means to show justice. It means to acquit or to vindicate. So when I accept Christ as my personal savior and he justifies me, then what God is doing is he is have acquitted me. He vindicates me. Mm-hmm. He recognized me. He recognized me as being right. Mm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody with me? Can everybody see the uh, screen still? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So when I'm justified by my faith, it means that I am able to stand right before God. Mm. Right. Okay. So now in Christian theology, there's this distinction is sometimes between justification and sanctification where justification refers to saving faith Mm. and sanctification refers to the process of gradual purification from sin and progressive spiritual growth 
that should mark the life of the believer. And I'll say that again. So when you look at justification, justification refers to our saving faith. It means when I accept Christ, God justifies me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sanctification now is a process. It's a progressive pro- progress, as we talked about. And guess what? This progressive progress should mark the life of the believer. Isn't it, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing that when we come in, we can look at each other and we can testify how each other has grown? Mm. Yes. yes. Can you imagine yes. coming to church and out of love, you could just look at your brother and you look at your sister and say, I see how you have grown. Hello. Amen. I love, I love that look on you. I love how God is growing you up. Mm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Shouldn't that be? That should be the conversation that we should be having in church. Mm. Amen. I'll say it again. That's the conversation we should be having in church. <laughs> yes. Amen. And in order to have the conversation, guess what? It's not about what you're doing. It's not about what that person is doing. It's about what I'm allowing God to do in me. All right. Because we can only have the conversation when I allow God to do it in me. Yes. And as he starts working on me, mm. I begin to start looking better. Amen. Feeling better. Amen. I should be sweeter. Amen. Sweeter does not mean weaker. Amen. 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 Just because I'm sweeter Amen. doesn't mean I'm weak. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It just means I'm allowing the process, I'm, I'm allowing God to work in me. And you mm. get to see the results of his work in my life. Mm. Yeah. We should look at each other and we should encourage each other in mm. the ways of God. Mm. You know, my brother, yeah. you know, my sister, I want to encourage you mm-hmm. to spend time with God. I want to encourage you mm-hmm. to have a prayer life. I want to encourage you to spend time in your word, because when you do that, I'm t- I, can, I can see some things happening in your life. I can see growth oh. happening in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, amen. Uh, is this mic still on? As they say, is this mic still on? I'll lose everybody. Yeah. All right. <laughs> amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. So let's turn to Romans 12. And we'll just look at verse one. Romans chapter 12. And we want to look at starting at verse one. So again, he is Jehovah Maccabees. He is the God who sanctifies. He is the God who sets apart. And he is setting us apart so that I could properly represent him. Mm -hmm. Why don't you say this with me? Lord, Lord, I want to properly represent you. I want to properly represent you. Properly represent you. Let's say that again. Say, Lord. Lord, I want to properly Lord, represent you. Properly I want to properly represent you. I want to properly represent you. So that means yeah. I want to allow yeah. the Lord to do mm-hmm. the work in my life. Amen. To work out those tough spots. Yes. To work out those hard yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because in the end, I want to represent. When people look at me, I want them to see him. Mm. Amen. That's the reflection. When they see me, I want them to see him. Amen. When I start speaking and start sharing, I don't want them to say that sound like Gilbert. I want them to say that, man, that sound like something Jesus would say. Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. When I do something, I don't want them to say, oh, he's such a great person. I want them to look at me and say, I see God doing that. Why? Because Mm -hmm. I should be living a life that draws them to him. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 All right. So let's look at Romans 12, starting at verse one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah. And mm. be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm-hmm. Those brethren, I beseech you. 
I encourage you mm-hmm. to do what? Mm-hmm. By the mercies of God, to present mm-hmm. your bodies. Mm-hmm. Man, oh. I am to present my mm-hmm. body, guess mm-hmm. what? As a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. See, in the Old Testament, what they would do, uh, any sacrifice would be placed on the altar. The the mm. the uh, the animal would be placed on the altar, mm-hmm. and then it would be set on fire, and the fire would consume, and God would accept the offering. Mm. So we're not getting on the altar per se to be consumed, but we are presenting ourselves to God's service so that we can be consumed mm. by Him. Hello. Amen. Because I am a living sacrifice. I'm not going to be a dead sacrifice. I'm going to be a living sacrifice. And when I present myself as it, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to be holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. And what is my reasonable service? This is the the reasonable thing that I can do for all that he's done for me. All that he's done for me. Yes. And look at it. It says, and do not, and be not conformed. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. have the mm-hmm. world. Don't be molded to mm-hmm. this world. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. be molded mm-hmm. to the way that the world does things. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I want you to be transformed. That word comes from the word metamorphosis. When you talk about metamorphosis, when something is metamorphosized, that there is no distinction from its beginning to its end. It is so radically different that you would mm-hmm. not be able to recognize it. Amen. And one of the things that we, you know, one of the things of metamorphosis that we understand is when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Mm-hmm. 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 You cannot recognize the two stages because they are two different looking creatures. Amen. See, the caterpillar is not what everybody takes picture of. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you don't see postcards with pal- caterpillars on them, do you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you only see postcards after the metamorphosis has happened. Amen. Because it has changed from a caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. Yes. yes. And that's what God is saying for us. I want you to metamorphosize your thinking. Mm-hmm. I want you to be so transformed, but there is no recognition. They won't be able to see you. And when they see you now, they won't be able to see what you look like in your past. Mama. Because you Amen. have been so radically changed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So don't be conformed. Don't be molded to this world. Don't be molded to this worldview. Don't be molded to the way the world thinks. Don't be molded mm-hmm. to the way the world lives. Don't be molded mm-hmm. to the way the world believes and acts. Mm-hmm. But be transformed by what? By the renewing or the refreshing of your mind. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor. Say, refresh your mind. Refresh your mind. Refresh your mind. <laughs> Refresh your mind. Clean your mind. Refresh it. Refresh it. And you're only you refresh it by the word of God. Mm. Look, so being transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter mm. 6. And we want to look at verse 11. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And as we turn there, does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any comments at this time? Mm-mm. No good, no good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Trusty Wilson. Trusty <laughs> 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 Wilson, my good chief leader tonight. I oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so First Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven. Gotcha. And it says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but yeah. ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and mm-hmm. by the spirit of our God. Amen. Yeah. So you are washed. Mm-hmm. Somebody say washed. Washed. You are sanctified. Somebody say sanctified. Sanctified. We have been justified. 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 I've been washed. Washed, cleaned by the blood. I've been sanctified, Sanctified. progressively working on me every single day, and I've been justified. I've been declared right before God. Amen. Amen. That means I can stand in his presence because of what Christ has done. Amen. Because of what Christ has done, and I have accepted what Christ has done, is why I'm able to go before the throne boldly Mm. in my Mm. time of need. So I can go before the throne of God with confidence. Because when he sees me, he no longer sees my sin. 
but he sees what Christ has done. Amen. Amen. And he says, because yeah. I see what my son has done, ask mm -hmm. me what you want in his yeah. name and I'll do it. Yeah. That's the power that we have, ladies and gentlemen. If we keep, we keep yeah. renouncing our power and our authority mm -hmm. because we refuse to be set aside. See, when you're not set aside, you let the enemy beat you up. You don't know the power that you had. You don't mm. know the access that you had. You don't know that you can ask for forgiveness and then go into the presence of God and be he's not going to uh, uh, judge you or, 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 or destroy you because when he sees you, he sees the blood. He sees yeah. what Christ has done. And so when he sees the blood, he mm. says, I'm going to do it because of the blood. I'm going to do it yeah. because of what Jesus done. And because yeah. you're asking it in his name, I can't refuse his name. Amen. 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 That's why Jesus says, if you ask anything in my name, my father will do it. My Lord. Amen. You know why? Because when he looks at me, he sees yes. his son. Yes. Mm. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Right. I can go to his presence and he sees his son. Mm. Even when the enemy comes before me and tries to, you know, uh, you know, you know, bring accusations against mm. me. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. He can bring all the accusation mm -hmm. he wants, Mama. but when he shows up with my accusations, he's just going to show—he's going to show him Christ's hand. He's going to see the the nail print in his hand. Yeah, he's going to see you know the the how the spear went in his side and the, the print in his his feet and say because of what he's done, I know what he did. But he already yeah. went to the cross for that. Mm -hmm. I already Mama. judged him for that. Because yeah. when Christ went to the cross, every sin, past, present, and future, I yeah. judged it already. Yeah. And yes, say that I know they did it. I know yeah. you're telling yeah. the truth this time. I know yeah. they did it. But guess what? Right. That sin has already been taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. That's what we get excited about. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For dying for me. Amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. You. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. So now through throughout Leviticus, God was getting his children ready for their destiny by instructing mm -hmm. them how to worship and walk with him once they got to the promised land. Amen. Mm -hmm. so what God is doing through sanctification is he's teaching us <coughs> how to worship and walk with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's teaching us. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching you how mm -hmm. to walk with me. I'm instructing you how to worship me. Hello. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's what we have to look at. He is instructing us. He's telling us what is proper to him. Mm -hmm. He is showing us because there is a right way. There's a wrong way. He's telling us this is how I want to be praised and worshiped. Mm -hmm. Don't just come bring me any old thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what caused the issue between Abel and Cain. Mm -hmm. God instructed them what was appropriate sacrifice to bring. Abel brought what God asked them to bring. Cain did not. My Lord. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. showed respect to Abel's offering and he rejected Cain's. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Cain wanted to bring to him what he wanted to bring to God. Um, and God says that way mm -hmm. of approaching me is not right. It's not correct. That's not what I told you. Mm -hmm. My Lord. And too many times we keep trying to come to God and live for God the way we want to live for God mm -hmm. without no, no. living the way God. See, we, we want to say, you know, I'm going to do this way. I'm going to do it this way. It ain't mm -hmm. don't take all that. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do it. it, 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 it. And we want to do, you know, we want to give God our, you know, uh, the fruit of our efforts. No, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. God says that's not acceptable. No. And so when God rejects what we bring to him is sometimes why we live such defeated lives. Mm -hmm. So there are three words to help us grasp the significance of the meaning of the book of Leviticus when it comes uh, to the name that we're talking about, Jehovah Mekadesh, the Lord our sanctifier. Mm -hmm. Those three words are common, profane, and sacred. Say it again. Three words. Common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Profane. And sacred. And sacred. Yeah. Okay. Let me just say that one more time for those who are on our conference call line. Uh, common. 
mm-hmm. profane and sacred. Now, when we look at common, common is what God has created as regular and ordinary. It exists for the general welfare and general good of those involved. So when you look at things that are common, these are regular, ordinary things. Mm. And it exists for the general welfare and general good of those involved. When you look at profane, profane includes those things that are polluted, defiled, or contaminated. When we look at the profane things, these are things that are polluted, defiled, Mm -hmm. or contaminated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, say that with me. Say polluted. Polluted. Defiled. Defiled. Or contaminated. Or contaminated. These are the profound mm-hmm. things, profane things. And these are, can be looked at as destructive actions, mm-hmm. attitudes, and people. And people, yeah, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Always come at the people. people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we look at sacred. Mm. Sacred is that which is special to God mm. and it reflects his glory. Amen. So you have the common thing, which is just those regular, ordinary thing that exists for the welfare of those involved. Amen. You have the profound thing, which concludes those things that are polluted, defiled, or contaminated. contaminated. Mm-hmm. And sacred is that which is special to God. Mm-hmm. And it reflects his glory. Amen. 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 Let's look, let's look at common. Things that are common, ordinary, or regular, they remain common until you make <coughs> them either profane or sacred. Mm-hmm. So when you look at a common thing, uh, it is neither good or bad. Mm. It just is. When you think of a $20 bill, is it good or bad? Mm-hmm. Anybody? <laughs> it, was a, it wasn't rhetorical. I'm sorry. <laughs> you look at a, a twenty dollar bill. Is it good or bad? It's, it's good mm-hmm. when you broke. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really it's it's neither good or bad, right? <laughs> it just is. <laughs> the value twenty dollars. Yeah. The only way that it could become profane or sacred is based on what I do with it. Yeah. Mm. Everybody see me? So yeah. it, it's common. So it means there's nothing bad about a $20 bill. I have yet to see a $20 bill jump up and smack anybody. <laughs> Am I right? You're right. right. <laughs> if you have, let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know that wasn't a $20 bill. <laughs> <laughs> it was something else. <laughs> Somebody's hand. But it's a common thing. It's neither good or bad. Amen. Until someone does something with it. Mm-hmm. So which means mm-hmm. someone can make it profane by doing something bad with it. Mm. Or somebody can make it sacred by dedicating it into God. Mm. Same $20, mm-hmm. right? I'm on. But it's mm-hmm. I only change its character based on what I do with it. Mm. An example, we talked about this earlier. So when we consider the days of the week Mm. um, that God declared each day to be good. When you look Mm. in the book of Genesis, when he made each day, he said at the end, he said, and it was good. But when he got to the seventh day, he made it special or holy so which means the first six days weren't bad right <laughs> right no, because no. he had what he declared them as good good yeah. mm-hmm. but what did he do with the seventh day the reason yeah. why it becomes different 
is because of what God did to that day. Mm-hmm. He sanctified it. He declared yeah. it holy unto himself. Mm-hmm. So therefore, before when it would have just been an ordinary day, mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. took that common and made it sacred or special. Mm-hmm. And it was special because why? He sanctified it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So when we look at things in our lives, they can either be common, profane, or sacred. Yes. Common things in our lives stay ordinary until this we do something with it. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. So at this time, um, what I'm going to do because I see my, the time is uh, kind of uh, fastly getting uh, getting from us. You know, Pastor will allow. I'll pick up. Uh, pick up on the the next points on next week because I want to give him an opportunity to expound and to share um, uh, with us. Uh, so uh, before I bring Pastor on, does anybody have any questions or comments that they would like to, or any questions um, that they would like to ask at this time? Okay. Uh, well, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to uh, Pastor Ham. Pastor Ham, so that you go, uh, um, turn it over to you for you to uh, to share and to give us the benediction. Amen. Once again, thank you, son, for a job well, well done. Amen. 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 I would just like to point out just a few things. Amen. Uh, if you turn to uh, Genesis uh, chapter number four, uh, son, you made mention of this uh, about uh, Cain and Abel. I just want to point out a few things about that. Uh, if you turn to Genesis chapter number four, and uh, I want you to look at verses uh, three and uh, down to verse seven, three through seven, Genesis chapter number four, verses three. Speak up so they can hear you. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Can't hear. Can you hear me? I hear, I hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter number four and verses three through four. I mean, three through seven. It says, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto uh, the Lord. Now, we must understand that uh, Adam and Eve taught them how to properly approach God. Mm. Uh, Adam and Eve properly told Abel and Cain how to approach God. Mm. All right, now note what it says in verse four, and Abel, he also brought of the first uh, things, first things of his flock and of the fat girl, and the Lord had a respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect, and Cain was very raw, and his countenance fell. Now, the reason why the Lord had respect to Abel's offering, because an animal had to be sacrificed. It was the shedding of blood. And by doing that, Abel was saying to God, I recognize myself as being a sinner. And the only way that I can come into your holy presence is through the blood. Mm. It's through the blood. Mm. I recognize that I am a sinner. And the only way that I can come into your holy presence is through the blood. Now, it says Cain, it says Cain uh, brought, verse 3, brought of the fruit of the ground. Look at verse 3. He he brought of the fruit of the ground an Mm. offering unto the Lord. And that's why the Lord did not have respect for Cain's offering, because Cain literally was saying, I am not a sinner. And I can come into your presence 
Yeah, just in any old kind of way. Amen. That's what King was saying. I don't recognize <laughs> myself as being a sinner. And I can come into your holy presence in any old kind of way. Mm. And that is not correct. That's why God says in the verse number seven, if thou doest well, if you do the right thing your parents taught you how to approach me, he said, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? In other words, if you do what Abel has done, you will be accepted. Mm -hmm. All right? But then he says, if thou doest not well, no sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And so that's the distinction. Abel recognized himself as being a sinner. And being taught by his parents, the only way that I can come into the presence of a holy God is that blood must be shed. Mm. Blood must be shed. Mm. All right? And God accepted his offering. Mm -hmm. Once again, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. And remember, God cursed the ground. Mm. But Cain was saying, I am not a sinner. Mm -hmm. And I can come into God's presence just in your kind of way. And that is not correct. And a lot of people feel as though, you know, I'm not a sinner. I'm okay. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at, at the end, God's just going to judge all the good I've done. And that's going to get me into heaven. No, no, no. It's going to take the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, the other thing I would like to point out, uh, just, just briefly, just briefly, if you uh, turn to uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter number seven, Deuteronomy chapter number seven, I'm just going to look at verse one, because I don't want to take up too much time. In fact, that chapter is a very powerful chapter. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number seven, and I'm just going to look at verse number one. And I want you to see that all of these nations represent the flesh. All of these nations represent the flesh. It represents the things that we struggle with. All right. Now, note what it says. It says, Moses is speaking. He says, when the Lord thy God, note, shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, flesh, and the Gergesites, flesh, and the Amorites, flesh, and the Canaanites, flesh, and the Perizzites, flesh, and the Hivites, flesh, and the Jebusites, flesh. No, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And so what God is saying, the only way that you're going to possess these seven nations, which is greater than you, I am going to be the one who will allow you to possess their land. You're not going to be able to do it in your strength. I am going to be the one that's going to give you their land. And so we're going to see, sisters and brothers, that we are going to need a Joshua, a Joshua we need. In other words, we are going to need the Lord Jesus Christ through what he has accomplished for us on the cross, mm. through his shed blood, and through his indwelling spirit that will give us victory over the flesh. Mm. Now, some of you may be struggling just with two fleshly things, mm. three fleshly things. Some might be just struggling with just one fleshly thing, but there may be some who are struggling with seven fleshly things. Mm. So we're going to need a Joshua mm -hmm. 
to give us the victory over the flesh. These nations, mm. remember flesh, we only need a Joshua to give us the victory over these flesh things that we struggle with mm. after we have been saved. And of course, as my son already pointed out in, 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 in teaching, sanctification is a process. Mm. And so I just want to uh, uh, look at one other thing, but I don't want to be extensive. Go over to Deuteronomy chapter number 31. And we're going to look at verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter number 31. And we're going to look at verse 7. Now, we're going to see Jesus in this verse, even though it's historical. But we need a Joshua that's going to be able to take us into the land of promise. Mm. Moses can't do it because he represents the law. And the law cannot give us or cause us to inherit the promises of God. We need a Joshua. The Bible says if there was a law uh, 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 that would, uh, 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 in, in other words, if righteousness came by the law, you know, in other words, if we could keep the law, then, you know, we would have right standing with God, but we can't keep the law. Mm. And so Moses could not bring us into the land of promise. We need a Joshua. Mm. And so look what it says here in verse number seven, Deuteronomy chapter number 31 and verse 7, it says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, in the sight of all Israel, he said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them. Note. And thou, you, Joshua, shall cause them to inherit it. And so we see, sisters and brothers, we need a Joshua. Because it's through Jesus Christ that we have victory mm. over these seven nations that occupied the land of promise. Mm. These seven nations occupied the land of promise. But it's going to be Joshua who is going to allow Israel to inherit that land that God has promised that they would possess. And you see, Canaan is not a symbol of heaven. No, no. Canaan is not a symbol of heaven. Canaan is where our promises are. Canaan is where our promises are. Canaan is where the giants are. And remember that I said God has a unique way of, of, of putting our blessings where, where giants dwell. And we're going to see when you study the book of Joshua, Joshua was the one that caused them to inherit the land of Canaan. Mm. And so Jesus Christ is our Joshua, and he's the one that will allow us to inherit the promises that God has promised that we would have. Amen. Now remember that I said these seven nations represent the flesh. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if we be honest, you know, even though we're saved, some of us are still struggling with yeah. some things. Yes. Some of us are still struggling with some flesh issues. Yes, yes. But yes. it's going to take the Joshua yeah. mm -hmm. to give us the victory yeah. over mm -hmm. these flesh situations. Yeah. Amen. We need a Joshua. Yeah. We need a, in other words, we need Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We need Jesus because he is the one that will allow us to inherit the promises that God has promised us. And so if we put our faith and trust in God, in mm -hmm. spite of the giants that 
occupy mm -hmm. the land of promise, which is kingdom. Yeah. If we put our faith and trust in God, mm -hmm. God will bring every one of those giants down and he will cause us to inherit mm -hmm. those promises. Amen. Uh, Caleb Amen. was one of the spies mm -hmm. that went into the land of Canaan mm -hmm. and he came back and him and Joshua gave a positive report. And of course, the 10 gave a negative report and because the children of Israel believed the 10, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for 38 years until uh, all that generation died in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And right. the only two people that came out of Egypt was Joshua and Caleb. Now yeah. Caleb is now 85 years old. Mm -hmm. And he comes up to Joshua and says, you know what? Uh, 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 Moses promised me that I can have this land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The unique thing about Caleb, he is 85 years old. He said, just as strong as I was when I was 40, I'm 85 years now and I'm still strong. <laughs> Amen. I'm still strong. And you know what? The, the, the area that, 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 that Caleb wanted and, 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 and the land that Moses promised him yeah. was inhabited by giants. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the Bible said that Caleb got the victory uh -huh. over those giants that inhabited that part of land. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. right. yeah, mm -hmm. yes. he got the victory because he wholly mm -hmm. followed the Lord. Mm -hmm. It was the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now let's not forget this: mm -hmm. when God gives us the victory, don't you start patting yourself on the back. Amen. <laughs> Don't Amen. you start patting yourself on the back and, and trying to take some of his glory. Thank you, Jesus. God is not going to share any of his glory with nobody. Amen. And so when he brings you through something, when he gives you the victory over something, give him Amen. the glory, Amen. which is rightfully his. Yes. And if you have time, look it up mm -hmm. and you will see the victory that, that Caleb had when he was just 85 years old, he conquered the mountain that was held by giants. Mm -hmm. And God gave him the victory over those giants because God said, he wholly followed me. Mm -hmm. So sisters and brothers, even though we have, so to speak, seven fleshly things that we may be dealing with, mm -hmm. our Joshua, Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ mm. can give us the yeah. victory. Yeah. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to be that extensive. You're all right. You're all right. Uh, but thank God for our heavenly Joshua. Mm. <laughs> yes. Amen. amen. Thank God for our heavenly Joshua. Yeah. Thank you. None Jesus. other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And once again, son, thank you so very much mm. uh, for a job well done to those of you on Zoom. Thank you for your presence. Those of you who are online, thank you so very much for your presence. And as I always say when I end this uh, see Bible you. study, I see you in church. In church. Amen. God Amen. bless you and have a good night. You too. All see right. you in church. Yeah. Have a good night. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. So I love Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.